uh, lead us today. And uh, yeah, we thank God for the grace. Amen. So we already have our speaker in the house. And uh, I would like to maybe just read a, a little more about her as we uh, receive her in the name of the Lord. Yes, Miss Susan Sviro is uh, the managing director of AIVA Consulting Solutions, a marketing and communications agency that works with uh, uh, diverse organizations to support their growth by solving marketing and communication challenges. So she has vast experience and uh, uh, currently she sits on the board of Monitor Publications, Africa Center for Media Excellence, Basic Needs UK in Uganda, and a non-government organization that uh, works or that tackles mental health issues. Uh, she has served in various areas as a chairperson for Uganda Media Owners Association, uh, and also uh, in other workplaces, especially like banks, DFCU, and, uh, and other financial institutions, MTN, and so on. So uh, we uh, thank God for our speaker today, and she has a master's in administration, from University of Nicosia in Cyprus, and the Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication with French from Akai University, Kampala. Yes, uh, she, has, she has quite a number of things, but uh, I will stop at that for today. Yes, so join me as welcome, uh, Ms. Susan Sibirwa to uh, lead us in today's session. Amen. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Philemon. Philemon. <clears throat> Thank you so much uh, for having me, uh, IFU, and for this uh, amazing, amazing. Uh, maybe I can call it a series that uh, that you're currently running on uh, Occupy until he comes, and uh, it's been interesting. Uh, the sessions that I've attended and all the different uh, nuggets of wisdom that are being shared by the different speakers. And I thank God for such a time as this, for the encouragement to occupy until he comes. And uh, <clears throat> this can mean so many different things. And I, I really pray that as we talk about making a difference in life and work, that um, that I would be able to share from my experience. I know that um, we all have different experiences on what it means to, um, to make a difference. And so what I'm sharing today is really my own experience and, uh, and what I can share in terms of what perhaps you can learn uh, from my own life. And of course, the, the question and answer session then at the end should be able then to, um, to guide us in, 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 I would be really love to hear from you and also making use of the chat as we go along so that this session is as interactive as possible. I don't want to claim that I know everything. <laughs> like I said, just to share from my own experience. I hope you can all see my screen and I hope that you can all hear me uh, perfectly. Yes, we can. Perfect, thank you so much. So a brief, a brief introduction has been given about me and I'm just gonna say just a bit more um, that perhaps uh, was not included in the, in the uh, brief bio and also because of the, what we are talking about now today in terms of making a difference uh, in life and in work. And so I must add that I'm a mother of a 19 year old uh, beautiful princess called um, Elena Subi, who is in college, um, uh, who is in college right now. I am a, a member of uh, Vive Church. Vive Church is uh, marking three years uh, this August or September, three years. So it's a recent church plant and it's a church that was planted by uh, members of my life group uh, that used to meet in my house. And so I'm serving there um, in, in different capacities 
Um, I served there in the prayer ministry. I served as a pastor, an uh, elder, and uh, different things that they that I am occasionally tasked to do um, in Vive Church. I am a member of a movement called uh, Faith Driven Entrepreneur. Faith Driven Entrepreneur is a movement. Um, it's now global, but started in the US. And it just brings together entrepreneurs that are being intentional. So we are taught how to run our businesses uh, driven by faith. There's also faith driven investor. So for those who are investors and how you run your investment business driven by faith. And uh, so I'm a facilitator with Faith Driven Entrepreneur. And uh, I would really, based on this series, I was encouraged by one of the uh, members here um, uh, because she was in my cohort, uh, which I facilitated um, in January this year. And so I would also like to encourage anybody who would love to do Faith Driven Entrepreneur. It's eight weeks um, of uh, looking at lessons from different entrepreneurs around the world and what it means for us to run our businesses as faith-driven entrepreneurs. We also have a conference, in uh, a one-day conference in uh, September, and it will be online. So if you want more information, please uh, hook me up in the chat. You can also find it at faithdrivenentrepreneur.org. And uh, if you want to sign up, please let me know. And then also, as a business person, I'm a member of Business Networking International. Um, so that brings together business uh, owners, um, and uh, I'm a member of uh, in Uganda here, and I've served in different capacities in my chapter, and uh, it's a way that we grow our business. It's a proven way of growing our business. So I've also various leadership capacities ever since I joined uh, BNI. And then, of course, um, I think the member, I have levels of influence in these uh, different organizations apart from uh, my own, uh, which have been mentioned, Africa Center for Media Excellence, where I chair the board, Nation Media Group, uh, Footsteps Furniture, Green Hill Academy, Basic Needs, um, Refactory, which is still new for me, Uganda Marketers Society. So these are different organizations that uh, God has blessed me with a certain level of influence based on what I do as a member, either of the advisory board or board. And so uh, that's just a bit, uh, a bit more about me. And so as we talk about um, making a difference in life and in work, it's quite interesting because my personal mantra and which you will find in uh, uh, some of my profiles, my social media profiles, my personal mantra is making a positive difference every day. So when I was given a topic to choose uh, by uh, Antispe, it I really picked this one because it is something that is uh, is real to me. I can speak about this topic quite authentically because it is a part of me, it, making a positive. So uh, the title is making a difference. My mantra is making a positive difference because uh, in life, you can actually make a difference that takes value away. <laughs> so uh, maybe, uh, so in light of that, what I'm going to be talking about today without adding the word positive is making a positive difference in life and in work. Because that's my personal mantra. You find it, I think, on my LinkedIn profile, uh, on my Twitter profile. I call myself a great African, uh, transforming Africa. <laughs> and uh, recently um, branching out on my own in Aiva Consulting Solutions, I have made sure that this personal mantra is included in the company's um, mission statement, uh, vision uh, statement, and in our values as well, because it is true to me. And how did I get to this point of making this my personal mantra? Uh, that year was 2014, so I've been at it for uh, eight years now. 
2014 where the life changer for me was doing um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, People uh, by Steve Covey. And doing that training as, as, a, as, a, as part of the leadership team when I was serving at Vision Group as part of the Exco, as head of marketing and communications. And then after that, choosing to become a facilitator, uh, a, a, a certified uh, leadership facil uh, training facilitator under uh, Franklin Covey. And so I'm going to explain why that was really a game changer for me. Um, because you re I realized out of that training that I cannot be, and if once you choose to be an effective person, an effective leader, what, what's, what, how does that play out? How, how does that play out? And so many times I am asked, um, what, what do you exactly mean by making a positive difference every day? What do you mean? And for me, from that training, it came out that I have to live life in such a way that I impact people. I can do so many things right. I can build great organizations. I can uh, build great brands because my two passions are people and brands. So out of I, I, before it was brands only, but after doing the training, I added people to my uh, to my uh, to my portfolio of passion, passion for people and passion for brands. And all this is out there when you look at my social media profiles. I actually state that passion for people and a passion for brands. So when people ask me, what do you mean that you make a positive difference every day? Like. How do you even do that? Isn't that too much pressure on yourself? It means that I had to become intentional about making a positive difference every day in people, whether it's people, whether it's brands. So people means the people around me, and I'm going to explain that a bit later. The people in my life, the people around me, the people I meet, or brands. That means my work, making a positive difference every day. So this meant that I had to be intentional about my work and I had to be intentional about my relationships. There was no two way about it. If I'm going to come home every day, and I kid you not, every day I ask myself, at the end of the day, did I make a positive difference in someone's life today? Did I make a positive difference? And it can come in so many different ways. It could be a smile, it could be a hug, it could be uh, something I gave to somebody, it could be a stranger I met on the street that I helped, it could have been a hello. It's just a way of me measuring my own personal effectiveness because I have made it a choice to make a positive difference every day. It could be my parents, it could be making my mom's bed, it could be uh, saying hi to them. It's it comes out in so many different ways, but it's an intentional part of my life. And I'm gonna show you how I got there. Um, so when people ask me what I mean, and is it hard? And uh, isn't that too much pressure on you? It's not too much pressure on me anymore because it's my life mission statement. It's my mantra. And I told myself as, I, as we did that training that, uh, and also after reading uh, Purpose Driven Life, because so, so many things worked together in, my, in, 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 in coming to this. So obviously there was reading Purpose Driven Life and then, yeah, you read it and, you know, you think about it. And I'm sure many of us have read um, Purpose Driven Life. And then I did this training and then, you know, a couple of other books that I read. And at the end of it all, when you ask, when you ask yourself, what do you want written on your tombstone? And on my tombstone, I wrote, Herein lies Susan, <laughs> who made a positive difference every single day. Those are the words I want written on my tombstone. But how, I'm going to tell you how, or not, how did I, how did I get there? So along the way, as, as, as I've refined, as every day, I, I'm refining this, uh, I'm refining this, this 
a mantra, I'm refining my, my life mission statement. There are some guiding scriptures that uh, make me realize that it's not, and, and I think one of the ladies who was praying, one of our intercessors who was praying this morning, that it moves beyond me. It moves beyond you in terms of why uh, God created us and why we are here. If we're gonna make a positive difference in life and at work, it's not about me. It is about other people. And it is about the world around me in which God has placed me. So some of my guiding scriptures, which some of which move me to the point of, and now I'm so passionate about them. And sometimes I can't speak about them without uh, becoming really emotional. Luke 6, 31, treating others the same way that I would like to be treated. It means that uh, I, I, we, I consistently, we consistently have to be thinking about how we are treating others, whether it's the Ascari uh, or the, pers the, the person at the fuel station who um, uh, fuels your car, whether it is um, somebody who walks up to your window uh, or the stranger you meet on the street, how do we treat those people? And is it an opportunity for me, for you, to make a difference in that person's life? Matthew 25, 34 to 40 is for me the, the, the one that breaks me down completely. The one where Jesus talks about uh, feeding the hungry, giving uh, someone something to drink, uh, looking after strangers, uh, visiting the second hospital, um, being a voice for the voice, being a, a, a hand to the helpless, covering the naked. And that's when Jesus says, whoever, when you did it for the least of my brethren, you did it for me. Taking in the homeless is something that um, I am so passionate about. I am so um, it's, it's, I can't even explain it. And it's, it's just something so deep in me because I realized that that is the heart of God. That is the heart of God. And I, I, it can, I cannot separate myself from, uh, you know, when we say life and work, it's almost as if life is in compartments that I'm living life and then there is work. When, 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 when we do um, faith-driven entrepreneur, and again, I'm gonna encourage uh, us to, to, to join the movement of faith-driven entrepreneur, um, you realize that life is, 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 is actually a whole. Life is a whole. When God creates us um, and he gives us different things to do, th there, there is actually no separation. Um, when, when, when you hear, um, uh, a church like Worship Harvest says church begins on Monday. Uh, Sunday is garage time. You know, one of the things that they're saying is that the, 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 the separation of now this is church, this is ministry, and then now this is work, that those, those lines should actually be, they, they, we should remove those lines because the, they should not exist. Life as a whole, whether I'm at work, whether I'm at home, I should be able to have the same guiding principles that, that, that guide me. And I think some of the speakers um, this week that on, on, this, on this group that I've listened to have, have shared pretty much, uh, you know, where we show up at work different uh, than, where, than who we are at home, uh, than who we are at, at, at in church or when we're serving. And so the question then is always, is how do we actually realize that it's one and the same thing, that, that we are one holistic person and that we must show up at whatever place we show up, we show up as that one person that God called us to be. And, and so when Ephesians 2.10, which is my one of my also my guiding scriptures in life. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So this, these good works, Paul does not separate them and say these good works are uh, at home and these good works are at work and these good works are when you're at church, these good works. They, it talks about good works, that God prepared us beforehand for good work. So we, we, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are created for good works in life holistically. And so we must be able to remove, to be, to be guided by the same principles in no matter what office we are, whether I am CEO, <laughs> whether I am a pastor, whether I am a, a cell leader, whatever it is, God created us for good works. And so these are some of the verses that as, as, as I've meditated on them uh, continually, that God shows me then how to be this one person, that you see this one face, um, no matter where, no matter where I am, whether I'm sitting on a board or whether I am uh, with, my, with my daughter or with my family members, that I am this one person. And at a, at a certain point, you never ever want to get to the place where people are like, but who are, you know, that uh, whether you have some kind of like bipolar disorder where, you know, the person that you are when you're standing to preach the word, that the people in the office cannot relate with that person, especially those of us who are um, in the marketplace and are not like full-time, we, we used to use the word full-time, uh, full-time minister. Until I did a faith-driven entrepreneur and realized that even as a business owner, I am a full-time minister. How do I then ensure that my platform is being used to share the gospel of Christ? So I'm a full-time minister as a business owner. I'm a full-time minister as a mother. I'm a full-time minister as a board member. I'm a full-time minister. And so to, 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 to remove the gap between what we call sacred and what we call secular is something that when we do, we, when we remove that gap, we'll be able to then, uh, what can I say, merge uh, the, the whole point of making a difference, uh, a positive difference in life and in work. And I hope I am not, I, I hope that that is clear. That's just um, some background. So what are some of the attributes of God that, uh, that, I use um, to continue to remind me in this journey to make a positive difference in life and in work. God is creator God. He gave us the mandate um, to, to do. He gave us the mandate to go. Um, and there's so many scriptures. The Bible is a doing book. <laughs> and as I wrote this yesterday, I was like, Oh, wow. The Bible is a doing book from uh, from Genesis. We see uh, Abraham being told to go. Uh, we see um, Adam told to do. Um, it, it's always if it's the Israelites, uh, Exodus, they're told to go. If it, you know, it, it's a doing book when we get into uh, the, 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 the God was always giving instructions to the Israelites when we get into the New Testament and Jesus is do this and do that. And uh, Paul comes in with his letters and it's do this and do that. And the letters, if you write through to Revelation on, on, on uh, the letters to the churches, it's do this and don't do this and do this. So the Bible is a doing book. And if we live our lives governed by the Bible, then we will actually have no choice but, but to make that difference because. The Bible is a doing book. How we treat our neighbors, how we treat our family members, how we treat our colleagues at work, how we treat our business. So, so it's, it's a doing book. And as long as the Bible, in my personal value statements, um, uh, the Bible is my constitution. So of course, that doesn't mean that I don't fail. <laughs> Far, far be it from me. I have made a mess of so many things so many times. But because it's my constitution, because it's my guiding principles, 
it comes back. I come back to it and I ask myself, where did I go wrong? How did I go wrong? And I bring myself back. So God giving us the mandate to go, God giving us the mandate to create with him means that I have, he's given us so much potential to make a difference, whether it's through our skills, through our talents, through our gifts, through creating uh, uh, businesses that have an impact, through creating uh, technology, software that is going to impact people's lives. Um, he's given us so much potential. And then, of course, as someone was praying this morning, the question then is, how are we living up to that potential? Are we tapping into the creator uh, facilities that God has given us? Are we, are we making use of the immense potential, the capacity to do things? Many times we look at uh, people that uh, are always written about the Steve Jobs of this world, the Bill Gates of this world, um, you know, people who have created things that do, uh, that have impacted our lives in so many different ways. But I love to believe that as Christians, that, um, that, 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 that as Christians, each and every one of us are able to tap into that capacity of, of, of God who made us in his image and we're able to create something and we're able to, to, to create something that will make a difference in the lives of our communities, our families, our, our nation. But for us to be able to wait on God and tap into that vast wisdom that he has. And, and so I, I could, this is, you know, a whole uh, topic on its own. <laughs> and so I think uh, uh, the creator, the creative capabilities that we have, uh, uh, how do we tap into them? Secondly, God as a God of excellence, everything that God created was good. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And um, Colossians, um, uh, tell, uh, Colossians 3, you know, just to paraphrase that, whatever we do actually should be to the glory of God. So as I'm going about my everyday life, the question then is, am I doing this to God's standard? Am I doing this for the glory of God? Because God makes a difference. He makes a difference. Whether he says, let there be light and there is a light. Whether he says, uh, let there be vegetation. Whatever he speaks is a difference. So the question then for me is, am I doing what God, up to God's standard? Am I living up to God's standard? And so God, God's standard is excellence. God's standard is excellence, which means that whether I'm showing up at work, whether I'm showing up here to do a 45-minute presentation, wherever it is, am I living up to God's standard? And of course, as Christians, many times the, the challenge we get especially as you know as you interact with other business owners people don't really want to employ born again christians because they're they're like ah you know born again christians yeah they'll spend so much time praying and pe people will go for lunch hour and they'll never come back and things like that and we don't reflect god's standard of excellence in our work and so the challenge then for us to to do that is in our businesses when we show up whether i am in employment, whether I'm self-employed, at my house, as am I reflecting the glory of God? And God's standard, you know, when you look in the Old Testament, uh, when even like when Solomon was building the temple, God's standard is gold. His standard is gold. Like, you know, everything about the temple was gold, gold. And gold is the highest form of metal that, that, that there is. That just shows, you know, like excellence, perfection. And so that is, you know, should motivate you and me at least it motivates me to aim higher each time because when i aim higher i will make that difference when i aim higher when you look at, at, at athletes for example athletes train so hard because they're all uh trying to get that gold medal and so when you make when you when you're training and running and aiming for the prize of the gold medal you will have no choice but to make a difference when you look at athletes who have made a difference, they make, they, 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 when you look even at our own uh, Chip Tegay, for example, 
when you're aiming for gold, you make a difference. You will either set world records, you will earn enough money to come and uh, uh, change the community, build facilities, hospitals in your community, schools in your community, because you're aiming for gold. So when we aim for God's standard, we will actually have no choice. The difference will follow because that is God's standard. Then God has the appointing authority. Like again, I'm just talking about the attributes that uh, when I'm thinking about making a positive difference in life and work, uh, these there's so many attributes of God. I just picked out some that were that work uh, that worked for me. Um, uh, that worked for me. So God, the appointing authority. God, through you know, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. We know that salt, when we add salt to food, it makes a difference. Your eyes light up and like, ah, oh, this is tasty. <laughs> this is tasty. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. When you switch on the light, darkness um, disappears. So God has appointed us to make a difference by appointing us to be the salt, to be the light. So no matter, and this is not, uh, in a box, and it is not uh, it is not uh, separated. That when I'm at home, when I'm in church, I'm the salt. When I go to work, I disappear. No, everywhere I go, I am a light on a hill. Whether I'm in the office, whether I'm in the boardroom, whether I'm in my community, I am the light of the world. And the minute I remember that God has appointed me to be the light, it means I have to switch on my light. And when I switch on my light. Darkness in someone's life is going to go. Darkness in, uh, in a community is going to go because of my actions, because God is my appointing authority. And then God, the owner of all things. This is something that uh, completely blew me away uh, when I, and, and continues to blow me away. And I think one of the speakers this week was talking about stewardship and the fact that we are called um, to be stewards. So God is the owner of all things. We are simply stewards of what he has given us. The question then is, how do we make a difference for him with what he has blessed us with? Because he is the owner of all things. He owns our talents. He's the one who has given us talents, gifts, skills. Uh, you know, uh, the parable of the talents is one of my favorite uh, scriptures as well because it's it motivates me and scares me into action. It just like propels me into action, the parable of the talents. So the question then is, if I'm a steward, it means that God has given me this gift of speaking. I, I, I am a public speaker uh, and I love speaking to people. If God has given me this gift of, of God, this gift of communication, how do I make a difference for him with what he has blessed me with? And so, it it should be uh and because one day and that, and this for me is like the sobering thought if if one day i'm going to stand before god and he's going to ask me so susan what did you do with the gifts that i gave you and uh i, I want to be able god help me god have mercy on me god have mercy on all of us that we are able to stand before him and he's able to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, Susan, well done. And so that is, is, is a propeller for me. That is a propeller for me to realize that I've got, I've got to do, I've got to occupy, which is why the, the theme of occupy until he comes, it's we've got to occupy almost with, with a sense of urgency because we don't know the years that we have, of course, Long life by God's grace, 70, 80. But the question is, in those years that he has given me, am I able to stand before him? And is he able, is he going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did everything that I asked you to do. You made a difference. And I want him to be able to say, you remember that little girl you helped? Oh, do you remember that stranger that you prayed for? Oh, do you remember that a thousand shillings that you gave somebody? This is what it did for generations to come. And so that scares me, to be quite honest, because, I, you know, the Bible says that, that our work will be tried and we may survive uh, the, 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 the test of fire. Uh, the work, we may not survive, but we ourselves will survive. 
but but I, I really want the work that I do to survive the test of fire so that God is able to say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. So that's for me is, 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 is a propeller. It is a motivating factor to make a difference in life and in, and in work. So, um, so, so first on, on who, on who God is and those different attributes of God that, uh, that I think about. So let, let's then come into the lessons that I learned from doing the seven habits of highly effective people. If you've read the book, um, uh, thank, uh, if you've read the book, if you've done the training, if you haven't, I'm sure that, you know, it's, you can still find it. You can still do the training. There's lots of resources available online. For me, this was one of the most life-changing um, uh, experiences that I ever went through because, you know, many times we do training and we forget about it, but this is training that stuck with me. It, it completely stuck with me and the lessons that I learned stuck with me. So I've just listed down the seven habits there. I'm not going to, into, go into all of them, but I'm gonna go with the ones that uh, 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 have a lot to do with making a positive difference. And that's habit two and, uh, and habit three, which is big with the end in mind uh, and put first things first. Uh, uh, those are the habits uh, that are described as habits of personal uh, personal victory. Uh, things where you win the personal victory first before people can actually see uh, uh, the public uh, the public outcome of what is happening inside of you. So, uh, like I said, if you haven't read the book, if you haven't done the training, uh, if you're at work, you know it's available by Franklin Covey uh, representatives here. So what did I learn? Um, why these two habits uh, really impacted me? Um, the first thing that I learned in this is that each one of us has at least a dozen roles that we play in life. And uh, so we're not just limited. God, like I said, uh, made us and, and, and they change. And these roles change uh, year on year as long as you're in touch with yourself and you're constantly retreating into yourself and mapping out your life and writing your goals and things like that, you realize that there's at least a dozen roles that we play in life. So as part of this training, you know, you list down uh, these roles and whenever mentoring people, we go through this, we go through this exercise. So if you haven't ever done, if you haven't ever done it, list down the roles that you play currently. Now it could have been last year, it could be currently, Next year, it could be different if you take on additional roles, but list these roles down. So it could be spouse, parent, business leader, pastor, teacher, mentor, sibling, auntie, cousin, board member. It is it to list these roles down. And they could be 20, they could be whatever. But the important thing is for you then to understand, because if you don't know the roles that you play and you, you haven't listed them down, the question then is, how are you intentionally going to make a difference uh, in life and in work? Um, I'm just going to say in life, because I think, like I said, to just put it all together, to just amalgamate it all together. So to list these roles down, if you've never done this exercise, I'm going to encourage you to do it. So when you list these roles down, you're able to see all the different ways in which you can actually make a difference, community leader, LC chairman, whatever it is, chapter president, rotary member, whatever different roles that, um, that uh, God has given you. And so uh, what we are encouraged to do in, 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 uh, in this uh, Franklin, uh, Franklin COVID training is to picture your 80th birthday. And this is, you know, beginning with the end in mind, to picture your 80th birthday, like you're 80 years old, my dad now is, uh, turning, I think it's 82 this year, to picture, 82, 83, to picture your 80th birthday. And uh, on your 80th birthday, because that's a big one. Of course, now, you know, people do 40. Um, but at the time, I think when this training was done, 80 was a big number. 80 was a big number. Uh, but now people, you know, do 40, do 50, do 60. So in the training, the aspect, so it, you could picture your any birthday. You can picture your 40th. You can, if you're below 30, you can picture your 30th. You can picture your 50th even, because 50 is a big number, half a century. Um, what do you want people to say about you? So in these different roles, 
if I'm a spouse, if I'm a if I'm a I'm a, a parent. And this for me was like, oh my goodness. If I'm a business leader, if I'm a boss, if I'm a coach, if I'm a what do I want people in these roles to say about me on my 80th birthday? And uh that was you know for me that the, 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 the veil just the, or the cloud or the mirror just dropped dead like boom like what do i want them to say about me and uh if i and uh, let me give you an example like uh for my daughter i just wanted her and at that time she was still pretty young but i wanted her to say that my mom is a pretty awesome mom and to be quite honest at that time i was not an awesome mom i wasn't a present mom because I'm a single mom, uh, uh, and so you're busy juggling career, juggling life, and so sometimes you leave uh, the children to other people, to life, to the fates of life, and whatever. And you, at that point in time, I was not being an intentional mom, and I realized then that I had to be an intentional mom, whether she was in uh, uh, boarding school, I had to check in with her teachers, I had to make sure I was present for. Uh, activities that that mattered as opposed to sending someone else so this uh, because when you do this it 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 teaches them that you begin to live intentionally to bring whatever you want people to say about you you begin to live intentionally to bring these things to life um um and then of course to notice that um to notice that uh, you plan, you plan. One of the things that I decided to do was for my nieces, my numerous nieces and nephews. I one of the things I wanted them, I want them to say on my 80th birthday is that uh, Auntie Susan is simply the best auntie uh, in the entire world. So what does that mean for me, for my numerous nephews and nieces? It means I've got to be present for them. It means I have to remember birthdays. It means their days out. It means we have ice cream dates minus their parents. It means I've got to plan and make those things happen. Now, of course, when you realize when I'm talking about making a positive difference in life, uh, in, in life, it's not about buildings. It's not about acquiring properties. It's not about uh, putting loads of money in the bank. All those things are good, but in my experience, only in as much as they can affect the people that God has placed in my path. All if, if it's billions in the bank account, it's pointless for me. I cannot make a difference by sitting there saying, ah, oh, I've got billions in the bank. It has to filter down into making a difference in the people that God has. So it's about people because uh, when uh, someone once said that, um, someone once said that it is not when someone dies, you're not going to say, ah, oh, you know, they'll have this and they've left 10 cars. And when people come and give obituaries, uh, speeches, it's always about, they helped me to do this. They, you know, they were, they were, they were this to me. They were my coach. They were my best friend. It's about what we do for other people. That is what counts. So even as we've been talking about legacy, this legacy this week, and all that it's important for us to remember that legacy is good in as much as it impacts because people never forget how you make them feel people never forget the things that you do for them that legacy has as much to do with the impact on people um and what we do for people like jesus said um it, what we do for people is what um ultimately matters so when you've done your sheet I've just given an example. When you've done your sheet on roles, it could look something like this. As a mother, you know, what goals are you going to set in terms of making a difference? It's about intentional living. As a mother, as a teacher, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a disciple of Christ, as a daughter, as a friend, as a coworker. So depending on the different roles that you have, um, what are the different, what are the ways in which you're going to set goals to make a positive difference in each and every one of these roles. It seems like a lot, but trust me, when you start this exercise, you'll actually realize that it's not so difficult. So the key points that I would like us to take away today. Um, uh, number one is um, see your life 
as a whole, but broken up into roles. So, so your life as a whole, like I am Susan, but broken up into roles. These are the different roles. Like I said, today they change, tomorrow they change, depending on whatever God has for us. And then we live intentionally. Be intentional. Plan and act. Write these things down. What is your mission statement? What are your values as a person? And how do you actually intentionally go out of your way to uh, make a positive difference um, in life? How do you do it? Because, you know, we're living in a world where um, people really want to show that I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And, you know, we've become selfish in that regard in terms of trying to push ourselves forward. And really, this is not what I'm saying in terms of see me, I'm doing this, see me, I'm doing this. But when you actually go out of your way and small steps at a time, somehow you find that you're propelled to the forefront without you actually seeking the limelight. I don't even know if that makes sense. Because you're, you're seeking to do things God's way, and that is number three, uh, to, you, you find that you'll be propelled to the limelight because light, light cannot be hidden. Um, salt cannot be hidden. It's there. A light on a city on a hill cannot be hidden. That as you're doing that, the, 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 you will be seen, but not because you went out to be seen, but because you chose to be the light and 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 and, and, and do things intentionally. Number two is to ask the Holy Spirit for help because uh, one of the things that I fear most in life is realizing that I did the wrong thing, but I I, I was I did the right things. I did things right, but I did the wrong things because God has a calling for each and every one of us. So we must be able to ask the Holy Spirit for help to be in the right place at the right time um, in order to be able to fulfill this. And from my experience, it works. The Holy Spirit is a helper. Number three, to continually ask myself if I am making a difference God's way. It's not uh, what I do and you know, people say, ah, I gave this. That is not God's way. God's way is completely different. So to continually ask myself if I'm making a difference, God's way. It's not, it's not about the world clapping and saying, ah, no. Am I achieving God's applause? Am I in God's heart? Am I doing things God's way? And then, of course, in that, uh, number four is, you know, which I love this, uh, the, cap, uh, the love, the heart of love, ministry in word and ministry in deed. Am I ministering in word as in like the word of god am i ministering indeed not just one but two in every single aspect of who of the roles um that god has 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 has, has laid out for me or that i'm in right now am i ministering in word am i ministering indeed combining those two will definitely ensure that i'm making a difference in uh in life and in work and uh those are 45 minutes <laughs> Thank you very much. I am now ready to take your questions. Over to you, Philip. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Susan, for uh, this wonderful session. Yes, uh, we are really excited. So there are several questions that have already been uh, sent in the chat. And uh, one is, uh, could you please have uh, more details uh, on how to join the faith-based entrepreneurs? And, uh, Yes, I think you addressed that. There's about two people, uh, how we yeah. could join that. Okay. And then um, and the other is um, how can I want to be excellent and succeed in the marketplace where bribes and corruption are the order of the day? Yeah. Okay, so maybe you could address those, then I will get the others. Okay. So on faith, on faith, uh, faith driven entrepreneur. Um, you can go to faith, uh, faithdrivenentrepreneur.org. So right now, I think there's an ongoing cohort. The next one will be in uh, September, October. Uh, so I think right now there's an ongoing one. And then right now we're in Africa. So right now we have uh, FDE Africa as well. And so you can just, uh, I think I've seen some, uh, some numbers in the chat. Um, I've seen some numbers in the chat and, and uh, I've seen some numbers in the chat. I'll also put my, my telephone number right here. Um, I'll put my telephone number in the chat right now. 
So I can just let you know when there's a next cohort and then I can send you an email because I'll be facilitating the next cohort as well um, so that you can join my cohort. It's like I said, it's eight weeks. Um, we, 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 someone is asking, okay, I'll type that, I'll type the link. Um, and then, like I said, we have the annual conference in September. I think now the tickets are going for $59. We'll have a live, uh, a live uh, session at uh, Synapis. If any of you have heard of Synapis, uh, Synapis is an organization that trains people, but purely based on faith, uh, business people. So Synapis will be hosting us at the square for the for that for that uh, live streaming uh, so our ticket is at $59 right now um and then there's also faith driven uh uh faith driven uh faith driven investor because these are christian investors multimillionaires uh multimillionaires uh, ten uh multimillionaires in dollars uh, who are looking for businesses that are having an impact who are looking for faith driven entrepreneurs to work with so that is the faith uh, driven investor which will be the day after faith driven uh faith driven entrepreneur um so that is uh the the um that uh faith let me just put this here faith driven entrepreneur uh dot org i think that's uh yeah that's the link right there i've put it in the chat um in a world where which is full of corruption <laughs> Oh wow, so much corruption. Like it's all around us. How do we make a positive difference? And uh, one is, 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 and there's no easy answer because sometimes, and I think uh, Patrick the other day mentioned, you know, people coming with envelopes, depending on the level of influence that you are, people coming with envelopes, either to thank you or to motivate you to do things in a particular way. And, and, at the end of it all, at that point in time, we really need to be able to ask ourselves, <laughs> okay, Holy Spirit, what, what, what should I do? What should I do? It's, it's, it's very important for us to ask ourselves, what should we do? Because I've always told myself that there's absolutely no way that my soul is worth even 100 million shillings. It's, it can't be worth that. My soul is worth so much more. And, and so to be able to to continually in, be in that inquire of God, like uh, King David or uh, in the Bible, the kings in the Bible. I love reading the Old Testament when the kings in the Bible, when faced with a tough situation, uh, the, the ones who followed after God would inquire after the Lord. They would seek the prophet of the, of the, of the, the, the prophet of the house and say, what does God want us to do? Especially those who are in high places of, of leadership. Where there is a king in the palace, there should be a prophet in the palace. Those of us who are in positions of, of, of leadership should be in that place where we have either somebody who speaks to us or whether we, uh, because we, people need to bear, the, we need to hear from others. Sometimes we, the power around us, the money around us, we need somebody who speaks into our lives, who is able to, the Naboth, the, 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 prophet, uh, the prophet who, is it Nathan? Uh, the prophet who comes and says, this is the way, walk in it. And so uh, it, it, it's, it's a continual reminder that we need those people because people who pray for us, people who will pray us out of those situations, lead me not into temptation, deliver me from evil. It's, it's a battle. It's a battle for our souls, but we must, the truth is we can win it. The truth is we can win it. We can choose to say, I'm going to walk away from this. We can choose to actually walk away. We know people who have walked away from positions because they are not, or who have, who are, God may even cause you to be fired from a particular position because you're not going to get your hands dirty. So all I can say right now, I can't prescribe uh, and say because everyone's situation is different, but I know that the same Holy Spirit who helps is the same one who can help to get us out of those situations. So there is an answer. There is victory. We overwhelmingly conquer through Christ. And so there is an answer. That is what I would say. Over to you, Philemon. <laughs> wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, then uh, there are these other two, which were sent in a bit earlier. I don't know if the answers were received, but uh, one said, kindly outline God's standards. Uh, I don't know what he exactly meant, but then the other also said, throw more light on the things that make an excellent worker at the workplace. So 
okay. perhaps they have been addressed, but you could just add on. Okay. So God's excellent, God's standard is excellence. <laughs> that is it. God's standard is excellence. God's standard, when God created the world, he looked back and he saw, God saw that his work was good. The question then for us who go to work every day, can you look back on your work yesterday, what you did yesterday, the tasks that you did, the projects that you for, that you completed, the, road, the, 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 the reports that you submitted, can you look back on your work and say, it is good. That is God's standard. It is one of excellence. And recently I was, I was inspired and I'm, I'm undertaking the changes myself because I'm a business owner. In when you walk into my office, can you see God's standard? Can you see God's standard of excellence at my workplace? Uh, and I was recently thinking about uh, uh, our, our humble church beginnings where many times our church beginnings start with, you know, with the roof, uh, tin roof, mabati, papyrus, things like that, and, you know, and, and we, sometimes it stays in that way. Does that reflect God's standard of excellence? Um, and so the, 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 the and I'm, I'm not advocating for, uh, I'm not saying that, you know, but God, uh, I, without getting me wrong on this, the point I'm trying to make here is that, God's standard is excellence. We must be able to look back on our work. Some people live in mansions, but when you go to the church building, it is a papyrus with a mud floor. And yet I'm living in a big house. David didn't even want to build himself a house until he had built God's temple. And God just said, uh-uh, it's not for you to build. So the question, that, so what I'm trying to say here is God's standard is gold. It is gold. It is, it is gold. That's why we read about heaven. We are told streets of gold. We are told precious stones everywhere. What is that equivalent in my place? Godliness, uh, they say cleanliness is next to godliness. When I look at Kampala sometimes and some suburbs and just the dirt everywhere, it is a reflection of the fact that we do not have the character of God in us, which is why you know people will throw rubbish everywhere. The place will be dirty, the place will whatever, because God's standard even is cleanliness. Cleanliness is God's standard. Look at your house. Look at your look at your look at your office. Look at the way you show up. Look at your dressing. Look at the way you show up. Look at your car. Look at your look at your 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 your, your demeanor. Is it a reflection of that standard of 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 of, of God? Um, I hope that answers that in terms of God's standard. Sorry, I forgot what was the next question. <laughs> Well, I um, think your sense I did in the long run. Uh, okay. What makes okay. what okay? What makes you an excellent worker at the workplace? So yes, making me an excellent worker at the workplace. Faithfulness, 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 faithfulness in the work that God has called me to do. Faithfulness uh, to my uh, um, uh, to my employer. Faithfulness uh, to my calling. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness is makes me an excellent worker. Commitment makes me an excellent worker. Showing up, showing up, showing up as the light. Showing up is going to make me an excellent worker because I'm going to show up. I'm going to be passionate about what I do because why? At the end of it all, I'm working for God. The Bible says uh, that each slave should work for the Lord, not for the masters, that we work not for men, but for God. If I'm working for God, <laughs> If I'm working for God, my goodness, if God is the one watching me there, trust me, I will do absolutely everything, spot clean, spot, no mistake, no flaws. I will not be wasting time because I am working for God. So that uh, verse, that verse in, in Colossians, if that is my, if I have it there that I'm working for God and not for man, it's going to make me an excellent worker because God's, God's word will continually be motivating me to do different things. The Bible talks about the word of God that sanctifies. It sanctifies, which means that it's continually cleansing us. It is washing us clean. It is, it is doing something in us. So if we're working for God and God's word is our standard, then that, work, that word is doing something in me every day and transforming me into an excellent person. Wow. Yes, I hope that uh, answers that. 
Yes, thank you so much. So in just one minute, uh, have you found any challenges identifying as a faith-driven entrepreneur, for example? Have you missed opportunities because of your faith? And that was a question from yeah, Carolyn. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the, the challenges, um, the challenges uh, identifying as a faith-driven entrepreneur. Really, I think the initial challenge is just identifying as a faith-driven entrepreneur. <laughs> the day I had to write on my LinkedIn profile that I am a believer in God, I realized that that was going to turn, you know, like people away from me. But that's okay because I said, I've got to identify. I've got to identify as the child. I have to identify because it, it is who I am. It is who I am. Are there examples? Are there opportunities I've missed because of it? Absolutely. Because these days, because people read my LinkedIn profile, people will ask me when business opportunities come and they will ask me, are you, able, are you open to handling this type of business? And then I'm able to say, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I won't be able to do that. But I'm sure I can point you to someone who can. Because there are times where I will actually pray about a certain opportunity and then I'll be able, there are some outright, I'll say, no, I won't be able to handle your business. But others, I will pray because not every opportunity is my opportunity. I have to be able to learn as a faith-driven entrepreneur to do business God's way. And for me to be able to say that, God, you're my business partner. So if God is my business partner, what are those things that he has for me? Not every opportunity. There's money that will come to me that is going to be a real sinkhole, a rabbit hole that I don't want to go. So to learn to listen every day and say, God, you're my business partner. You have 100% equity in my business. What do you want me to do today? What do you want me to do about this proposal? So there will be opportunities that I miss, but that's okay because God as my business partner has me totally, completely covered. I hope that covers it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we've really used up our time very, very well. And I uh, really thank you for making time. Yes, uh, those with uh, more questions, uh, we have a session at uh, 10 p.m. So please, we use the same link. Make sure you join in and uh, we continue the discussions further. And of course, we'll continue to discuss among us and see how the Lord can prepare us and sanctify us more so that we may make a difference. Thank you so much, uh, Susan. You have really blessed us and you have challenged us. And I believe uh, we'll contact you actually from the links you've shared. Yes, so um, with that time well spent, I'd like to uh, I call upon uh, uh, someone to lead us in a prayer and give us uh, the, yes, I'll call upon Aunt Phoebe, if uh, that's okay with you, could just lead us in a closing prayer. And uh, yes, for any further contributions or support to the ministry, uh, feel free to contact. Uh, giving. Yes, Aunt Phoebe, uh, could you just please pray for us and bring this to a close? Okay. Abba Father, we come before you this morning with hearts full of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord our God, that you have given us food for thought, areas to correct. They are very simple, very practical, very meaningful. Lord, by the time you have used your servant, you have seen that there are areas in, my, in our lives which are not right, cleanliness, uh, obedience, uh, faithfulness at work. There are so many, Lord, which have come in a very uh, simple way, but very dear to your heart, and they are going to change us in our workplaces. Lord, we ask that from now, from this moment, we'll be mindful of those things which hinder us from achieving the best from you because we have ignored them. I pray, Lord our God, that we we'll take tickle to work on them as you have used your servant. You have sent her so that she can tell us, so that you can use her to point out areas of correction. Thank you, Lord our God, for your word is meant to correct us back into the righteous path. 
Thank you, Lord, for using your servant. Thank you for everyone who has been on this call. Even those who are on YouTube, we bless your holy name. Even those who will see later, Lord, I pray that this seed which has been planted this morning will grow and multiply and change people and change this nation. Even those who are outside this nation, change the body of Christ, the world around, so that we may be better people for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. 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 Yes. May the Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the love and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.